It's your girl Shantae back with another episode of chatting with Shantae. How in the world are y'all doing? Me, I am doing fabulous. And listen, I am super excited because both my shows are back on P Valley after 200 years and The Shy. So as you can see from the title, we are discussing the premiere episode of The Shy for season five, Overnight Celebrity. Listen, this is a great introduction to this new season. Like I can already tell just by watching the trailer a few weeks back, but seeing the full first episode, I can tell, oh, this season finna be real good. A whole lot of unresolved things finna get resolved, okay? New issues, new drama. I'm here for it. So did y'all watch the episode? If you have, y'all know my Discord. Disclaimer, I don't really do spoiler free so if you haven't watched the episode just yet then I would advise you to pause this go back and watch it and then come back or if you don't care about spoilers at all get comfortable okay so we're gonna get right into it so the way I do it is I take it character by character storyline by storyline group everything that they went through together so that way I can move on and it makes sense for me it helps me keep on track and if you see me looking down I do have my phone here where I just have my notes and stuff like that so we can talk about the key points so make sure you hit the like button comment subscribe make sure you hit the bell so you notify when i drop a video get your snacks get your drinks prop your feet up and let's get it let's go so i'm gonna start with tiff and emmy listen we already know the drama that these two was going through last season with this whole open marriage due to emmy cheating and she wanted to be with dante and now with somebody else and it's a hot mess so the show starts off with emmy having this sex dream between him and keisha and everyone kind of has this thing where they want keisha and emma to get back together we know the show started off with them two being together then they went their separate ways went through some things so what team are y'all on do y'all think keisha and emmett have grown and matured and though they went through some stuff do you think they're in a better headspace and just space in general to get back together or do y'all think they should just keep it at a mutual friendship have each other's backs keep it platonic or do y'all think they should flirt here and there but you know not, nothing too serious what y'all think i feel like you know Third season, fourth season, absolutely not, especially with Keisha going through everything that she went through. I don't think she was in the proper headspace to entertain her old boo thing. But, you know, we still see that they have some sort of chemistry, okay? And that's a common theme between, you know, some of these uh, other couples in the show, too. There's a lot of common themes that I kind of picked up on from this first episode that I can kind of tell some different directions we're going through with this season, so it makes me really excited for it. But what do y'all think? Do y'all think that they should get back together or... Is it just to uh, keep it out of loss or whatever? So Tiffany comes in, she interrupts his dream or whatever, and she lets him know, hey, I'm gonna go stay at my mama's house. I just need to get my head together. I gotta figure out what I want. I'm taking the baby with me. I'll see you when I see you. And Emmett ain't trying to hear all that. He wants, you know, her, him, and EJ to be a family, be together, be in the same house. And she just kind of had it up to here. And it's kind of like those things where, you know, the moment he starts to care is the moment she's starting not to care. Not that she doesn't care, but, you know, she's running out of cares to give, I guess you could say, right? So he ends up going to uh, his father, Darnell, you know, for advice and stuff like that. Darnell is basically like, forget her, forget the whole situation, whatever. And it, I don't think he doesn't like Tiffany per se, but he's just... I think a, a player recognizes a play, if you know what I mean, okay? After all the things that she was going through, initiating the whole open marriage and the stuff like that, I think he kind of just sees through all of that. So, Emmett ends up getting drunk, okay? And pops up to Tiffany's mom's house. Now, we can already see that Tiffany does not want to be with her mama. We see why she left, okay, real quick, because as the soon, uh, the moment, as soon as Tiffany walked through the door, her mama was going in. How long you trying to stay? You ain't going to be talking to me crazy in my house. And we see Tiffany, it looked like she left when she was 16 or 17 because we got to her bedroom we got omarion and b2k i'm like what year is this okay so emmett shows up and he's trying to talk trying to get her to come back home and she's really clear on she just wants her space she's just trying to figure out you know where she is in her life what direction she wants to go into and there were several points by several different characters that i myself could relate to especially as a young 20 something year old living on her own you kind of want your space you're trying to figure out what path you want to take what you're supposed to be doing with your life and tiffany i don't know her exact age we know she was pregnant with ej at 16 i'm not sure if she was 16 when she gave birth or 17 but you know now fast forward a few years in her early 20s just trying to figure out what she wants to do 
but she made it very clear to Emmett that she no longer wants to be his wife. At least that's what she's heavily considering, that she doesn't want to be his wife. So we're going to see what happens with them. Oh, and also throughout the episode, we see Tiffany was helping Keisha go look at dorm rooms and she was also texting Rob. Y'all remember Iman Shumpert played Rob. You know, he had the business and he wanted to go into business with Dom and Tiff and they started having a little inkling towards each other. So he invites her after she expresses to him how miserable she is staying at her mom's house. He invites her to come stay with him and she's like, well, you know, I got a son. He said, great. Anyway, come. So she and EJ go stay with him. So we're going to see how long that stays or she stays. Uh, what's going to happen? Are they going to get closer? Is Dante going to come back? What happened to Dante? We don't know. So, oh Lord, what do y'all think about Tiff and Emmy? It's just like babies the way y'all go about this whole marriage thing it's kind of backwards i mean you know usually when people go into an open marriage they're going into it with the idea of already you, you don't spring it you know just in the middle of it's not my business but we're gonna see okay and also if let's say keisha and emmett do rekindle you know what will that mean for Keisha and Tiffany? Because listen, I personally, I don't know if it's because I'm a girly girl, I'm for the girls, I have my girlfriends, you know. I don't know if it's because of that, but I personally enjoy seeing Tiff and Keisha you know, put aside their differences and actually become cool and help each other out and have each other's backs. I enjoy seeing that friendship budding because, you know, they had their rocky start in the beginning of the series and then to see them, you know, help each other and, you know, Keisha was having this baby and, you know, Tiffany knows about that and, you know, all that good stuff. So it's like, okay, though Keisha had him first, if you want to say it that way, but it's like, huh, how would that be? That would be awkward. Ooh. So what y'all think? Do y'all think... You know, Tiff and Emmett should just call it quits. Do you think Emmett should give up on trying to get Tiff and their family all back together? Do you think Keisha and Emmett should go about their thing? It's a whole lot, okay? It's a mess. But speaking of Keisha, we didn't see my good sis that often in this first episode, but we'll be seeing plenty more of her, trust me. And this is another element of someone's character that I could kind of relate to. So we all know she's had Ronnie and she's trying to, you know, start a new chapter with her life. You know, when she got kidnapped and she went through that traumatic situation, you know, she was about to go off to college. She had a track scholarship. She had all these things opening up for her, but they got snatched away when she went through what she went through. So she's trying to reclaim that while starting a new chapter in her life she has her son to take care of she's trying to figure out again what path she wants to go on and things like that so i think the burning question that everyone had regarding keisha's storyline is okay is she with christian y'all remember christian is a guy who started working with her last year or you know yeah last season uh at the store who took a liking to her they started dating and getting to know each other very nice guy now listen we all, well, I can't speak for everybody, but I know a lot of us. We were kind of like, okay, Keisha, tread carefully, tread lightly, baby girl. And a lot of people were mad talking about, oh, y'all don't believe there's good men. and blah. No one said that. I've never been the type to say there's no good men. All men are the same. I've never been that type. But you have to remember the last season, Keisha went through a very traumatic situation to end up, and then to end up getting pregnant by her abductor. And carrying his baby and just having that constant reminder. To me, it was just, okay, Keisha, we want you to be happy, okay? But tread slowly. Take your time. Don't just get with the first person that says hello. I mean, imagine if it was your sister or someone very close to you who went through something traumatic. Did, would you want them to date the first person that says, hi, you're pretty? No, you want them to be careful, you know, so I think that's where, at least for me, that's where I was coming from, okay? Not that I didn't trust uh, Christian, but I was giving him the side for a second, okay? But I thought he was cute. So everyone was like, okay, are y'all getting back together? Or not getting back together, but are y'all a couple? Are y'all getting together or whatever? And she is really in this place where... I really need to focus on me, get my life back on track. I have a son now who needs all of my attention, who is my main priority. I still want to have the college experience. I still want to live my life. And if it doesn't need to go on my plate right now, I don't want to force it on my plate, which, hey, I understand, okay? Again, that was another element that I could relate to. Listen, not that I, not that she never wants to get with Christian or anyone for that matter, but at this space and time in her life, a relationship is not a main uh, necessity, priority. It's not the main thing that she's focused about. She has a son and she's trying to get back to, you know, the old Keisha, basically. And so Christian understood. And, you know, who knows? I mean, it was not a 
it wasn't a definite no we'll never get together but it was a right now it's not the thing i'm really focused on okay which you can't get mad at her for that so we're, it's gonna be good to see keisha you know go back to her regular routine and uh just navigate this new way of life that she has now with her son but because oops but um you know who i need to come talk to keisha for a second my good sis Octavia, can she please just make a couple of cameo appearances? She ain't even got to be in person. FaceTime Keisha something. Because, listen, I still feel bad for the way Octavia just had to give the baby. I mean, we didn't even see the, see the conversation about how Keisha got the baby back. And, uh, like, can we see Octavia just for a couple minutes, please? I don't know if she's going to be in the season. I don't know. But it'll be nice to see her because, listen, Keisha did my sis wrong. That Listen. I'm going to just say it like that. <laughs> so anyway, so now for some other characters that we didn't really see that often, but I'm sure we'll be seeing a whole lot of their storyline is Nina and Dre, of course. So we all know the season they had last season. Uh, you know, Jada was sick and Dre is like her best friend. So of course she was keeping Jada secret because she didn't want everybody to feel sorry for her, which is understandable. But due to Dre keeping this secret from Nina, all these accusations and all these suspicions became a problem in their marriage because no one was communicating effectively nina wasn't expressing how she felt and dre though she was doing her due diligence for her friend it was negatively impacting her marriage and she could have said something to you know put uh, nina's mind at ease but she chose not to she kind of shut her out trying to protect her friend but you know so because nina thought jay jada and dre were cheating which like I said last season, uh, does Jada even like women? Like, a lot of things could have been avoided with this situation had people opened their mouths. But anyway, so because Nina was in her feelings, she went to the bar, got drunk, and had sex with the brat. So she cheated on Dre. She told Dre later on, and Dre was pissed off, of course. But, you know, because of a um, newcomer in the phone, I can't talk to that, in the family, in the home, Lene, they, she moved in with them. You know, they were like, let's put this to the side. Let's focus on the kids and make sure they're good but we gonna resolve this so we signed up for a couple seconds you know nina was cooking dre was like hey i love you and nina was like i love you too so i don't know if they fully reconciled or they got over the whole situation or if they gonna you know press play on it because they put it on pause they're gonna press play on that thing and really talk and do y'all think you know the brat's character i think it was the portia do y'all think she'll come back and you know stir up some trouble or you know listen there's so many different things that can happen and i just need some of these characters that were in introducing season four i need them to come back for a second okay and just you know stir some stuff up shake the table a little bit that's just me so yeah we saw them but i'm pretty sure we'll see more of the aftermath of that whole situation and how they truly feel because i don't know i mean i think they said it's been a few months you know tv time but it's like did they seem cool did y'all do y'all think they have fully recovered from this or do y'all think there's still some underlying issues that need to be resolved between them two so we shall see so next we got trig shot and tracy let's get it let's go so as soon as my good sis tracy walks into the community center it's a crowd of people because these two young fellas are fighting and who was one of them bakari y'all know bakari the one who killed ronnie the one who's always getting into it with jake the one that's always just acting the fool bakari he's beating down some dude so they all get them separated and go into tracy's office so they just trying to figure out what the heck is going on. So Trig and Shot are telling them to apologize to Tracy because y'all know this is her thing. And Tracy's just like, ew. <laughs> okay, I love Tracy. Listen, I love Ty David. She's that girl. But anyway, so she's just looking at them like, what is going on? What do we need to do? And then Trig and Shot come up with this idea for the two young dudes to come and volunteer at the community center to, you know, get their heads straight and keep them off the streets, keep them from fighting and all that stuff. So of course they're reluctant, but they kind of pressure them into doing it. So they leave out and Trig and Shot are feeling good about themselves. They're like, yes, we're going to make a good impact on the community. We're getting these two dudes on a straight and narrow. And Tracy's like, yeah, that's all well and good, but no. Do you know that you just invited a killer to come volunteer in my community center? Do you realize that? So they're like, ain't now one of them boys a killer. What is you talking about? And she's like, uh, no, Bakara, yeah, the one who was doing all that talking, he's the one who killed Ronnie. I was there. He said it was for Kugi. She knows his background, his history, and what he's capable of. So she's scared, and she just knows that if he's in the community center amongst all these other people, it's bound to be some trouble. So they're like, ugh. 
Okay, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But on a better note, Trig and Shad are in a jewelry store because Trig plans on proposing to Imani. So Shad, of course, is happy for his boy. That's one of his best friends. And he confides in him and just lets him know, I'm proud of you. Y'all are my family. I know me and Imani had like a rocky start in the beginning, but I've grown to love her and appreciate y'all and all that good stuff. So, ah, uh, yeah. So Imani is away in, oh, I forgot. Philly, DC, Detroit, somewhere child taking care of her mother, okay? So she's gonna come back and that's when he's going to propose. So then he goes, he as in a trick, he goes to Smokies because like I said last season, Smokies is the only readily available place in Chicago. Like it's the only place to eat, the only place to socialize and now the only place to propose because we have done this twice now all these proposals and all this stuff has happened at smoky smokies has seen a lot in its year of life okay so you know tree goes to emmett to make sure everything is still good with the proposal emmett is in his in his feelings because of the whole tiffany thing and so while they're talking and getting things together someone throws a brick through trig's jeep and it was bakari so bakari speeds off running trig takes off after him and he catches him and he hems him up and you know rubs him up and stuff like that threatening him and we see somebody recording now this is all bad for trig because on the on the outside looking in, you know, for the people who are looking because Shaw did end up showing him the video and stuff like that and seeing all the comments. To everybody who don't really know Bakari and what just happened, it just looks like a grown man harassing and bullying and hemming up this little boy. You know what I'm saying? But they don't know that he just threw a brick through his car. They don't know that he shot somebody. They don't know all the rough housing that he's been a part of. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, when you just click the video, it's just this grown man with Afro puffs roughing up this little boy. So, so it was all a setup because I guess Bakari was in his feelings about the way Trig and Shad uh, pretty much forced him to volunteer at the community center because you ain't going to be roughing him up and forcing him to do nothing. Whatever. So anyway, what else? What else? What else? Oh, yeah. Okay. So due to that, Shad did tell Trig while he was showing him the video that Imani saw like someone sent it to, sent it to Imani or whatever. So fast forward to the night of the proposal. The pro I cannot talk, y'all. Sorry. They uh getting the decorations together for the proposal at Smokies because again, Smokies is the only place to do all your functions. Anyway, so boom, somebody comes in, Trig is down on one knee, ready to pop the big question. We see a woman walk in. We could assume it's Imani, but it's not. I'm not quite sure who it is to her. I'm not sure if it's a relative, cousin, sister, or best friend. Not sure, but she did inform Trig that Imani saw the video of him roughhousing the little boy. That's how it looks. And she wasn't really feeling it. Imani's not really feeling it. She wants to make sure she's safe. So she's staying back home with her mom until she gets her thoughts together. So there's no proposal. Now we do know that we found this out before the season started that Imani or the actress that plays Imani Jasmine Davis, she will no longer be a part of the shot. So they did have to um, excuse her character off of the show and, you know, come up with a reason for her uh, absence on the show. So Imani is staying back home due to Trig's video. But I did watch an interview that Miss Jasmine Davis did uh, explaining her departure from the show. I'm not going to mince her words or try to paraphrase or anything because it's a very good interview. It's about an hour or so long, but they get straight to the point. And she just, you know, talks about her experience and the things that she felt and went through. So I would highly encourage you to watch it just so you can, you know, hear from her mouth and her words. But she is someone who, you know, saw my videos last year and she appreciated my commentary and my content. I appreciated her. And listen, she's very beautiful, very talented. So I'm pretty sure her finding another amazing role in other work will not be a problem. So all well wishes to her. But um, yeah, again, I would really advise you to watch her interview to see you know the main reason as to why she's no longer on the show so yeah now we can get to jada oh sorry one more part let me talk about my good sis tracy oh my goodness ty davis i love you another person who saw my videos and you know hey girl hey sis so uh at the end of the episode we have tracy and let me tell you how me and tracy are uh, just alike she was on her couch 
chilling. I think she has some wine under her blanket. Watch your waiting to exhale, baby. Tracy want to be me so bad. Tracy want to be me so bad. Because <laughs> that was me. So she's watching wait to exhale, okay? And she gets a knock at the door. So she's like me too. She paused the movie because you ain't going to be interrupting my good classic black films. So she opens the door and guess who is there? We see the OG himself. Q. I was like... Sir, we ain't seen you since 1999. What are you doing here? So he said, I'm here to finish what I started. He got some unfinished business. And then from the dark abyss of the concrete, out of the shadows, here comes Otis Perry, a.k.a. Duda. Hey, baby, what's up? She looking like Otis what are you doing here? He said, I came back for you. Tracy, if I can give you a piece of advice, run. Because ain't no telling what these two got going on popping up at your doorstep while you trying to watch Waiting to Exhale. Ain't no telling what's going on. So it's going to be a good season to figure out what's about to unfold. But baby, when we saw Q, I said oh we finna go there with this season okay so it's gonna be fun to see what happens with that so now we can go to jada and darnell i love them i love their dynamic i love their history and i love their chemistry this is a couple that they just the fire is always gonna be there between them like first loves high school crushes high school sweethearts they have a son and it's like they always gonna find a way to connect again reconnect they gonna do it okay so y'all know jada and Sway are together if you forgot who Sway was y'all know that was her masseuse who she got real close with so they opening up the show with them bumping and grinding too i said can we get a hello can we get a nice to see y'all again they just started off the show with some bumping and grinding i'm not mad at it I'm not against it, but can we get a hello first? Anyway, and y'all know Darnell and Dom are still together. We didn't see Dom in this episode, but she was mentioned quite a few times to let us know that she will, you know, be here. And so Suede really wants to take his relationship with Jada to an even higher level. He wants them to move in together. So he brings up the suggestion, hey, have you ever thought of us moving in together, you know? And another element of someone who I can relate to and what they're talking about, she is really enjoying her own space, like living by herself because, you know, she had Emmett in her house and then she had Emmett and the baby in her house. At one point, she had Emmett, the baby, and Tiffany in her house. Mama just wants to be in her own crib for two seconds, okay? She's enjoying. She's not single, but she's enjoying her time, okay? Especially after the season she had last uh, season, being sick and recovering well and stuff like that. She is trying to live her life, okay? No interruptions. She don't need people all up in her face. I don't blame her. Ain't nothing like coming to your own house and you're just chilling. You're chilling. Ain't nobody in your face ask you 50 lamb questions i understand jada i understand so she basically tells sway you know i never really thought about it not that she's against it but she just never thought about it but she did express to him how much she enjoys her own space so he's kind of getting offended because he feels like oh is that your way of saying i'm being a burden and i am i over here too much am i off in your face or whatever and she's like no i just enjoy where we're at and what we have you come over we have a good time you fix things for me you help me around the house what is there to, you know, fix or be mad about? So he took that as all he heard from that was, oh, so I'm just your handyman. I'm just here to fix your light bulbs and water your plants. That's all I'm here for. Bye. And she's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> she was looking like, ugh. So Darnell comes over to help fix her shower head. Sway was going to do it, but he stormed off. <laughs> Excuse me. So Darnell ends up fixing it for her. They cracking jokes. And then they have this moment of... Ooh, ooh, hey, bae, hey, old bae. So they start kissing and getting real hot and steamy. And then Jada stops it because they are committed to other people. And don't you know, Darnell said, F them kids. I said, ooh, Darnell, and your Bluetooth earpiece, please. So at one part was so funny. Emmett was like, I'm going to get you, because he was looking at Darnell's earpiece. He was like, I'm going to get you some AirPods, okay? Because what is this? And don't you know Darnell said, no, nah, I don't need all that uh fancy stuff. That ain't nothing but the feds. I said, well, look, look. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Jada stops it and she's like, no, nah, I'm with Suede. You're with Dom. Like, this wouldn't be right. No. So he ends up leaving, but I just know we're going to see a good, hot, and heavy moment with Jada and Darnell. It, it didn't stop there. It was just letting us know, oh, get ready to see more of them. Which, again, 
I'm not mad at it. That's another couple. I just feel like this is a season of finding yourself, like your identity and what it is that you truly want. Like with Keisha, Tiff, and um, Jada about wanting their own space and having their priorities together, trying to figure out which direction in life they want to go into. You know, very relatable for a lot of people. And, you know, rekindling of old relationships and stuff like that. You know, with Keisha and Emmett, Jada and Darnell. You know, I'm not sure if any of the kids may have some rekindlings like um, Gemma and Kayla. Not really sure, but this is going to be a good season for a lot of things. So we're going to see what happens. But like I said, I just truly feel in my heart in my bone marrow that Jada and Darnell, oh, if they don't get together together, they gonna get together together, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so lastly, we got the kids. I wasn't finna write all their names. I just put the kids. So Jake and Gemma are still together, which we all know how they got together last season. Just blasphemous. I just, anyway, Papa is still doing his podcast. He's doing his team. We finna get a little spicy side of Papa. We gonna get into that in a second. Who else? Kevin and Lene, they're like brother and sister now, which I think is really cute. We know in the beginning, uh, he had a little crush on her, but now that she's moved in with him and his family, and you know, they're kind of looked at as like siblings. I think that's really, really cute. I like that. And who else? Oh, okay. So Jake wants to try out for the varsity basketball team. So he's talking about that. Uh, they're all in the car except for Maisha. Maisha's still there, but uh, everybody else that I mentioned was in the car, and he was talking about trying out for the basketball team and stuff like that now my thing is i know they just kids and whatever but and i know they squashed the beef last season but i just don't think we gotta be riding to school together and you know bumping elbows and kikiing you stole my girlfriend you cheated on me with my best friend what is there much to talk about no i'm straight um, I just know it's a little bit too close for comfort. But anyways, they dropped Gemma off at school. Then fast forward, we get to the basketball tryouts. Mind you, Jake is going for the varsity basketball team, not the regular tryouts. Oh, no. We go to the varsity tryouts with no practice. Only assumptions. Anyway, so we're at the tryouts. Everybody's there. And uh, he's not doing his greatest. Actually, he sucks. Uh, I'm so sorry, baby. But he's getting his butt spanked. And his friends are on the bleachers like, did y'all know he couldn't play? Because y'all set him up for failure if y'all knew that. Um, So the coach basically pulls him to the side. <clears throat> Excuse me, the coach uh, pulls him to the side and lets him know, not this season, baby boy. Let's try again next season. Practice a little bit and try out next year. So Jake gets mad and storms off. And that's when Gemma shows up with her great American cookie cake or whatever she had for him. So she follows him and she's trying to talk to him, but he's just so riled up and in his feelings. So he basically just, you know, tells her to leave him alone. I don't want what you got. Leave me alone. And she gets mad. So that causes her to, you know, skip school the next day or whatever. She's in bed taking up in mental uh break day which or mental health day excuse me which i got mad at but you know so her dad comes in mr st john he's on his cane because y'all remember that whole incident with him and dude that happened that had him in the hospital just disrespectful otis but anyway so he's talking to her trying to figure out what's going on and she's like jake is being a jerk and you know sometimes i'm thinking should i have left kevin for him and he's like oh don't do that you've already flip flop once don't re-flip flop don't do that don't do that. Don't switch uh, Jake out for Kevin. Don't do that. You should have done it in the first place. So he's giving her some great fatherly advice. Like, listen, if he truly cares for you and he truly wants this to work, then he will. But at this point, just give, give him some space. If he comes back to try and talk, then you know what kind of dude you got. If he keeps you at a distance, then, hey, that's his loss. I'm not mad at that either. So what else? Oh, so then we get to the part where it just gets real sharp lifted okay that don't make sense but it took a real sharp left turn okay so the boys jake kevin and papa are playing video games at kevin's house and jake and uh papa start kind of going back and forth a little bit so papa's basically like why did you try out and you can't play like let's get to the root of it all right and jake was like i mean i just assumed i would make the team and papa was like because you a black boy from chicago you thought you was finna be uh, an NBA player try again okay so they kind of go back and forth and Papa's like I mean at least I'm doing something with myself I got a whole podcast trying to make a positive impact on our community what are you doing and Jake was like your podcast ain't about nothing like you just get on the microphone and just start talking crap like you don't say nothing and, you know impactful so that stings Papa and we're gonna find that out in a little bit uh here later 
so Kevin ends up telling them both to shut up because he's trying to focus on the game. Oh, and uh, one more part before we get to the end. Uh, Kevin and Len Lene, they end up going to, oh, actually this was after the incident, but I want to save the incident for last. Um, but Kevin and Lene actually end up going to that same spot where they play all those video games. And Kevin started playing with these two white dudes or whatever. And he was losing at first and they were kind of, you know, teasing him a little bit. And Lene was like, can you beat these Anglo-Saxons so we can go? I said, oh okay girl and you know he's having these flashbacks of him shooting ronnie i was like we ain't seen this scene since 2001 why is we talking about shooting Ron oh that poor baby still ain't got i mean i don't know that's not something you just get over but <laughs> okay so he gets his focus back and he ends up beating the two white dudes and i felt in my spirit and I said this while I was watching it. Ashley Miller, she also said the same thing on Twitter. We both were like, mm, an N-word is about to come out. And not for any of the black people. Literally, as I was watching that scene, I said to myself, I feel an N-word brewing. <laughs> and I was doing this. I feel an N-word brewing. That energy was there from one of them white dudes that got their butts whooped by this little black kid. Yeah. Uh, N word is about to pop out, but they didn't. But I, I feel like they was thinking it. I, I feel like they was thinking it. But anyway, so now fast forward or rewind technically uh, to this pep rally. So the pep rally, uh, Papa is going to be announcing who made the varsity basketball team, blah, blah, blah. And we found out that that's what he was going to be doing when they were all playing video games. So he gets on the microphone. He's like, hey, y'all. Hey, how y'all doing? Um, I'm here to announce who made the varsity basketball team. But before I do that, my homeboy, Jake, bruh, you got embarrassed at the tryouts. Like, didn't you practice? You really got played. Like, you really got embarrassed. So, of course, Jake is like, man, forget you, Papa, whatever. And so, it starts off funny because everybody's like, oh, snap. Oh, you know, it starts off like a little roast session. It should have ended there, but Papa, because he's so in his feelings about the way Jake came for his podcast. Now listen, I got a podcast too, Chatting with Shantae. I understand. I'm sensitive about my stuff too, Papa, but some things we just gotta, we just gotta let it go, okay? So it starts off like an old snap type of moment, and then it takes a sharp left okay so sharp that i got whiplash i said oh snap that's what we're doing so after jake says forget you papa he said f you but i'm not cussing so he said f you papa whatever and so papa says you're not allowed to talk like that at the school see this is the type of behavior that happens when you don't have a father in the home what <laughs> what papa <laughs> what and so jake is like whatever yo daddy ain't nothing and papa's like well at least i got a daddy see if more black people had their fathers present in the home and had homes to call their own and had something of their own we wouldn't be acting like this what papa you just supposed to be announcing who's number 15 on the basketball team why are you doing this so it went from it being directed at jake and people laughing to everybody at the pep rally being offended because this is an predominantly black school okay and not saying that black people are the only people that have issues with father. you know not saying that but the way it was displayed okay you got this majority black school, if not all black school. And you're saying the lack of black fathers and real black family household structures is what causes this type of behavior. It goes from the focus being on one person who didn't do well at the basketball tryout to a whole bunch of people getting offended. Even Lene, because Papa said something, I can't remember the exact wording, but he was basically like, you know, if more people had real homes to call their own, something along those lines. And Lene looked at Kevin like, oh, is he trying to throw shade at me? Like, what is that supposed to be? Everybody got offended, okay? And Jake is like, you dummy. Like, uh, Papa, you got to know when to hold him and when to fold him, baby, because you could have left it. First of all, you shouldn't have came at Jake and tried to embarrass him in public anyway. I get your feelings was hurt, but come on now. Um, but you, if you had to do that, you could have left it at that and moved on. You wanted to take it another way and try to keep digging at him, 
but ultimately negatively impacting the whole, I almost said congregation, but yeah, the whole congregation, everybody. You you messed it up for yourself, but they started booing him, throwing trash at him. The uh, teacher snatched the microphone from him and he walked off. So we gonna see uh, if Jake and Papa can come from this because who, buddy? That did y'all expect? I don't know if I expected that from Papa because you know usually Papa's the peacemaker. We know when Kevin and Jake had their issue last season, Papa was kind of the peacemaker. You know he's that friend, and for him to go at Jake like this in such a grand public way, it's like wow. And ultimately, you know, uh, offending his whole school. So, huh? What y'all think that's gonna mean for? Uh, Papa's Pulpit, the podcast, okay? What y'all think? But this was a good season opener. They really, you know, are introducing some themes and some storylines and stuff like that. Do y'all think we're going to see any other characters from like last season that we got introduced to? Or what y'all think going to happen, okay? Are y'all excited for this season? Are y'all watching it? I would love to hear y'all's thoughts and opinions. But until the next episode, I will catch y'all later, okay? I said that so backwards. I will catch y'all. Whatever, bye, y'all. <laughs> Y'all have to understand, I am so sleepy. But anyway, I will catch y'all in the next video. I love y'all. Bye. <laughs>